I like to start off with scoring a line across the copper foil. This creates a separation area so that when I roll the dichroic up off of the copper, it'll separate cleanly at that line. I'm just using a straight edge and a single edge razor blade. You can also use an X-Acto knife or whatever you have handy. I've prepared a basic bead shape, which I'll then heat in the flame to prepare it to roll up the dichroic off of the copper sheet. When the bead is heated enough, I'm going to come down and roll it slowly across the dichroic on the copper foil. It'll roll that dichroic right up off of the copper. Kind of marver it a little bit right there in place. I'm going to take my tweezers and just clean a little bit of it off of the edge. I knock it right back onto the copper because it's still good dichroic and I can use it in the next step or in the, the later uh, presentation, the next bead that I'm going to make. I'll show you what I do with it. I'm going to gently heat the surface of the bead to help bond the dichroic to the bead. It will need to be clear in case though. The dichroic itself is sitting on the surface and the clear casing will seal it to the bead and protect it. Now that the bead has been clear cased, I'm heating it and shaping it just as you would any other bead. And at this point, you can do any surface decorations that you want, and you're ready to go. So here's that second method that I spoke about. I can take the flakes and I can scrape more off of the copper sheet right onto a graphite pad and from there I can roll it up onto a glass bead. You can chop the pieces up with your tweezers or whatever you want to make them as large or as small as you want. You want to be careful when you're working with this copper sheet that you don't bend it too much because it will release the dichroic and it will fall right off of the sheet. That's what it's designed to do. So you don't want to crinkle it too much unless that's your intention to remove the dichroic from the sheet. I've made another basic bead. I'm going to heat it in the flame. Once I get a sufficient amount of heat into it, I'm going to come down to that graphite pad and roll through my dichroic bits. 
You can heat the bead, come back and roll through more. You can do that as many times as you want to pick up the amount of dichroic that you want. Then just the same as the last bead, you're going to heat this dichroic on and marver it on some. And then it will need to be clear cased to seal the dichroic down. And at that point, you can add any surface decoration to it as you normally would. I'm going to move on to furnace working. I prep the sheet the same way I do for flame working. I'm going to score a line across the foil sheet. That will give me a line of separation so that when I come to it with my gather, I can roll it right off of the copper sheet. There's no preheating. In fact, you don't want to preheat the sheet. You want the sheet to stay nice and flat so that as you come over to it to roll it up, It'll roll right off. I put a wrench across the top of the sheet just to hold it still for me while I do this roll up. You can use anything you like. I'm going to make a pass across the sheet. Go back to the glory hole. Heat it on a little bit. Then I'm going to come back to the marver and start to marver it into the surface. My next step is going to be to take my diamond shears and cut the top off of this piece to bring the dichroic to a point. That way I don't have that big clear window out on the end. And then with a nice pick, I'm going to push into the center of it to create a pocket for an air bubble. I can now take this and gather over it. I've never had any of the dichroic come off into my clear pot, so there has not been a contamination issue. And then I can take it to the bench and work it just like any other paperweight that I might do. There's several different paperweights that I've done with this method and using this new dichroic copper foil material. Hope this videotape has helped you.